pricked up. Nasario Garcia's stories come from the land. Hola, Nasario. Hola. Where do stories come from? In my particular case, I always anchor my stories on my boyhood. Growing up in rural New Mexico, I grew up in the Rio Puerco Valley, southeast of Chaco Canyon. It's about 50 miles as a crow flies northwest of Albuquerque. So many of my stories are based on my childhood, and others are based on stories that I heard later on as an adult from old timers whom I interviewed because I've, in, I've interviewed many, many old timers and oral history has been part of my uh, endeavor, my means of entertaining kids, educating kids and their parents and perhaps even more so their grandparents. And of course, there are those uh, stories that are anchored, if you will, in a particular theme, a particular topic that may result in my creating a story that is fictitious in many ways, but with at least a modicum of reality because it's something that could actually happen. And what is at the heart, the corazón of a good story? What I like to think is that pivotal in a story is for the story to connect with, hum with us human beings. I think that's fundamental. At the same time, you have to show passion. You have to touch people's spirit. The story has to go to the soul of the listener, of the reader. Let me briefly share with you the story that uh, my father told me many years later. I was a grown up, but he reflected on his past. My father once asked, would you like to hear the story about the white ghost? And my ears pricked up. I wondered what he had in store. He said, my son, I was coming home one night from a dance. It was past 12 o'clock. Along the way, my horse got very thirsty and I stopped at a lagoon to give him water. As I sat calmly and the horse gulping water, I sat calmly in the saddle and suddenly, what did I see? There was this young lady dressed in white coming out of the water. I could not believe my eyes. I was transfixed. My eyes were about to come out of the eye sockets. And the ghost was neither splashing the water nor making noise. Finally, as the ghost was approaching about 25, 30 feet from me, it went underwater. I was beside myself, and I thought to myself, a witch? No, it could not be a witch because it wasn't dressed in black. Besides, witches come, cannot be out after 12 o'clock because they cannot inflict harm on their innocent victims. In this case, she was dressed in white, which symbolized goodness and not evil. Next day, I went home and I told my father. And my father very matter-of-factly said, oh, my son, that's a story that's been, there's a story from old timers that's been around forever. It's about a young lady who drowned. And every once in a while, when the moon is shining brightly, she comes out for air. And that's the story about the white ghost that walked on water. The numerous stories that I collected from old timers over the years in so many dramatic ways 
mirrored some of the stories that I taught in the classroom by well-known writers because the old timers, while they weren't uh, writers, they were storytellers, even though they didn't, they didn't realize they were storytellers, but their stories were based on real life experiences, okay? And what they didn't know and what helped me being a professor of, of, of literature in the classroom vis-a-vis -vis listening to the old folks is the similarities that existed. The rural setting, the animals, the people, mm. the humbleness of people, okay? Common or ordinary, ordinary people, mm. uneducated, but intelligent mm. and able to make a spin, uh, make a top spin without even blowing at it. <laughs> I mean, we all have stories to tell. Why folklore? Because folklore is the word itself uh, dictates or conveys. It, it, it's the lore that comes from the folks, from the common people. And their stories, unfortunately, are not always heard uh, because they're not rescued hmm. from oblivion. They're not tape recorded. They're not uh, recorded for preservation. Yet, uh, some of these people were that I interviewed were perhaps uh, much, much better at storytelling than a professor was in, in lecturing. Yeah. In no disrespect to my colleagues, yeah. but it's, it's a fact of life. Why does the world need storytelling? Why does the world need storytellers? Yes. One of the answers is because people can always relate to an episode in the story. If it's time, you can say, oh yes, I remember that. I mean, we've heard that before. Oh yes, I heard something yesterday in my woodworking shop or whatever. There's always a way of connecting with people. I think that's, that's what gives that aspect of storytelling, credence and vitality. Mm -hmm.